Hello, and thank you for joining us for another week of Press Row. I'm Matt Finkel, and we're joined by Todd Walker, Andy Lynch, sitting in for Aaron Matthews. Good to see Andy back on the Press Row set, and Mark Kuntz, of course, on the end. Guys, state week for the boys, a big week for the city of Lima with both LCC and Lima Senior in the state semifinals. Also a couple other local schools in Lincoln View, Jackson Center. We'll get to them in a moment, but let's start with the Spartans who have now won four close games in a row. The districts were close, regionals were even closer with wins over Lorraine and Canton McKinley. Does this give you more or less confidence heading into the state tournament for the Spartans? I, I don't know that it's affected my confidence level. I think you, know, you look at a number of factors in that the games were tight. You know, at the district playing against league foes for a third time around, those are always lower scoring, closer games if you have two good teams. Uh, I recall one year at state finals, it was Moeller and St. X, and it was like 32 to 31. I mean, you just know each other so well. So th that was not really that a surprise. I, I never felt that Lima Senior would be quote unquote susceptible to a close game because they had had blowouts or what have you. I think they're built to win close games. They can play defense in the half court. And even though lately it's been a little more suspect, they have good free throw shooters that can get to the line late when they need to. Uh, I, you know, I think my confidence level was always high, but I guess if you want to say they found a way to win games, then I guess maybe it's a little higher. Well, I think a lot of people expected this Lima Senior team to blow through the districts in particular. And the fact that they didn't blow through the district, the fact that they were tested by Whitmer and Toledo St. John's in the district semifinals and, and finals, I think had some people concerned going into the regional tournament. I never was in that group. I, I, I liked the fact that Lima Senior got tested in the district. I liked the fact that they were then tested in the regional because, quite frankly, outside of the LCC game in the regular season, Lima Senior was not tested during the regular season. They breezed through that schedule. They breezed through the, the track schedule. So now you've got almost a, a battle-tested team, if you want, going into the state tournament. I, I think Lima Senior is poised to, to make a, a run to Saturday. And what happens on Saturday, we'll find out. But I, I really like the Spartans' chances to get that victory Friday night and play for the title on Saturday night. Once Lima Senior beat LCC and then won the track championship, then they kind of you know, they were resting guys here and there. They still had some big wins, but I wondered about this team going into the district, third meeting with St. John's. Matt and I, I think, talked about it. Uh, this, they're susceptible this game. I was concerned with that St. John's game sure. because it's the third time, because they've been playing, you know, not sluggish necessarily, but not at, at the high level they were the rest of the way. And then once they beat uh, Toledo St. John's, uh, I said, I can't, I can't pick against them anymore. This team has something where they're winning close games. Uh, Coach Q just has that that toughness instilled in those guys that, that they're ready for those moments. And I think they'll be prepared on the state stage for that. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, Mark was a little flippant about their regular season. There were a few testers. I mean, you go back to the really? first game of the year, they were down 15 points to St. John's on the road, came back and won. That was huge. And then what else? I saw them? both games against Whitmer and those were both testers. The one Jay Thomas didn't play on the road. They were down in the fourth quarter in front of a very hostile crowd. They could have lost that game. Their home game with St. John's was tight throughout. They trailed until the fourth quarter. Now, we all remember the, the Fremont Ross debacles and a couple of their other cakewalks, but the Lima Central Catholic game came right down to the end. So I think they knew that those two district games could be tougher than any of the two regular season games they played against those teams. And it turned out that they were. Well, we saw it against Kenton McKinley as well. They were down by nine in the first half, right? Led by 16 at the start of the fourth quarter. And then that lead dwindles to two at the midway point of the fourth. Yet they find a way to tough it out, get the tough baskets. Huge game by Rico Stafford. And they're able to pull through. And that's exactly what that team needed to do in that moment. And they were able to do, which has earned them their, this first trip to state since 1992 and a potentially historic weekend for Lima Senior. Now, speaking of historic weekends, LCC could be on for another one. They're now back at state for the third straight year in a row and waiting in the wings, possibly, if LCC can get past Roger Bacon and Villa Angeles State Joe's can take care of their business on Thursday. We could have a third straight title game between these two schools and a rubber match of sorts with LCC winning in 2014 and VASJ winning last year. My question to you is, will it happen? Will we get this? Absolutely. I think so, too. I think uh, you know, VASJ plays Lynchburg Clay in the first semifinal. I don't think the Clay Mustangs have any idea uh, that how good VASJ is going to be. And I think Lima Central Catholic will handle Roger Bacon. Uh, you know, I, I think most people say VASJ is still very good, but nowhere near 
the super team they've had the last three years with three Division I college players, two of them high major players. And I think that's probably true, but they're still loaded, they're still good, they still know how to win. And I think LCC is definitely going to take care of their business against Roger Bacon, although they're not going to come in and lay down. I think it's just clear these are the two best teams in the field. I would agree. And looking at the scores, I haven't seen VSJ this year at all. Don't know their personnel very well, but they've been tested throughout the tournament. I mean, a two point or one point win over Beachwood District Final, two point win over Warrensville Heights, uh, and even in the the regional final, just a 54-46 victory where we've seen LCC uh, just hit its stride. But their defense is phenomenal. Uh, foul trouble? That's that's the question mark. Right. We've been saying all season if they get in foul trouble, you know, how deep can LCC go? But other than that, they're playing so well. Yeah, the T-Birds, I mean, stifling, smothering, whatever you can think of to describe their defense, they've been playing it. And I would imagine that this Roger Bacon game will see more of the same. But Bacon likes to get up and down the floor. This could be a chance for the T-Birds to really get out and move, something they've not been able to do other than creating turnovers with their half-court defense. This one could be wide open. It'll be interesting to see how LCC how LCC approaches that VASJ game if they get there again. A lot of those guys, of course, remembering the last two years. Now, we've talked about all season long how LCC and Lima Senior have excelled this season and the talent on both of their teams. We did get one head-to-head -head matchup, and it came down to a game winner. If they played in a best of seven, these two rosters with these two coaches, who takes it? Are we talking like <laughs> an NBA Finals type <laughs> of schedule where we're going nice. to have three days off in between the games? Or are we talking they're going to play two, day off three, day yeah. off two? I, I think if LCC and Lima Senior played a series, I think eventually the Lima Senior depth would wear down LCC. I, I think the Spartans would probably win in, in six or, or seven games. But maybe that's something we can see over the summer on the playgrounds. <laughs> I agree with Mark. That's exactly where I was going. I think if they played a, a series of games like that, seven games, and 12 or 13 days, you know, like a real best of seven series, the Spartans' depth would prevail, but it should be a lot of fun. How about if they both win Saturday, they play a championship, <laughs> one game <laughs> take all the next day. What do you think, Lima well, Cup part two? Who would uh, win that though? I don't know. I one think, game series this time of year. I think the Spartans would say, we already won that. We don't need to mess <laughs> with that. That's We've not, got the yeah. Oh, that would be just a real treat for everybody in Lima to get to watch yeah. that one more time again. All right, let's talk about the D4 game now. Lincoln View and Jackson Center, two area teams meeting up in the state semifinals. Very exciting. Do you guys like the Lancers' chances of getting past the Tigers and then going on to claim their second state title in school history? I, I do. I think the Lancers are a classic D4 team to me. They're senior laden. They're balanced. They're not overly big, but they're big at each spot. You know, they don't have an undersized guy or a really big guy. They're just uniformly of good size. And I think this team feels destined. They feel prepared. Uh, this is something they're not shrinking away from. I think they're more than capable of doing it. I, th I think a key matchup will be, can they handle Brady Wildermuth inside for Jackson Center? Uh, he's a 6'6 post, a legitimate big man. And Jackson Center's got a quality point guard, Drew Sospi. If they can get the ball inside consistently and convert, Jackson Center's got a chance. But I like Lincoln View. Sospi and Wildermuth. Combined average 35 points a game. We know right. Jackson Center doesn't get out of the 40s very often. No. So those guys are the offense, but, but they look if you play such good team defense. Help side defense, we've seen that through the regional. We've seen that during the regular season as well. Uh, but Coach Elkert, you know, he only has two seniors on this team. Yeah, it's He's a young back team, at State right? again. What yeah. a great job he has done at uh, Jackson Center. Kind of, you know, very strict disciplinarian down there in Tiger Country, but always has his guys ready. I, I think it's going to be a good matchup, but... I like Lincoln View. They have that Crestview, New Knoxville a few years ago right. feel about them where they can all pass the ball, they can all play help defense, and even if there's switches, uh, it'll be a tough matchup inside on Wildermuth, but I think they can get through that. Well, I guess Todd touched upon the balance of the Lancers. It is really quite impressive. The fact that you've got a number of seniors that have played together for a number of years. They complement each other very well. And the fact that they, you know, they went through that little bit of a, a spurt towards the end of the year when Trevor Neat was out with the injury where they, they had to kind of reassess their rotation and, and kind of come up some different ways to win games. And they were able to, to pull out some close victories. Uh, you know, certainly with the, the win over Crestview in, in the district finals, the, the momentum that gave them going up to Bowling Green. I, I think the Lancers are, are going to be able to, to get back to Saturday. And, you know, I know there's plenty of uh, guys from that 1997 state championship team who have already made plans to be in Columbus both Friday and Saturday. 
You know, with Lincoln View, there was a cool tweet by Trevor Neat. Think about the success that that area of Van Wert County has had in the last three years. It was Crestview in 2014, right? And then we had Wayne Trace in the state semis last mm -hmm. year. And, and Trevor Neat, a year ago, tweeted, <laughs> you know, we'll be there. And they were able to bring it to fruition, which was kind of exciting. But I do think this Jackson Center game it might be the best one of this, the semifinals because, like you pointed out, Andy, they're young, but they've been on this trajectory where they're getting better and better at, throughout the season and throughout the postseason that they're playing their best basketball right now, that it's going to be a really good matchup between the Tigers and the Lancers. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. And we will have the Tigers and Lancers game for you on WTLW at 10 p.m. on Friday night, as well as the Lima Senior game 10 p.m. on WOSN. That'll be Thursday, or Friday for the Lima Senior game. The LCC game will be Thursday at 10 p.m. on WOSN. So you can catch all three state semifinals featuring local teams. All right, so we've had our March Madness, and we've talked about our March Madness with high school hoops, but there's another March Madness getting started with college basketball. Who you got in the Final Four? The CBI, I like <laughs> Yes. It's North Iowa. Ohio State's going to win the NIT. No. You told me about a Vegas tournament? I just the, heard of that. For the the Vegas time. 16, which <laughs> didn't find 16 teams, so they cut it to the Vegas 8. It's a real tournament. Uh, you know, as far as a Final Four, I don't know if I'm good enough to pick a Final Four, but I'm telling you, I don't want to mess with Michigan State. Right. I think Sparty has a good draw. A lot of people carped on their two seed, but in a way it actually works out better for them when you look at the road they have and the regional being in Chicago. I think Chicago will be all green if they get there. Uh, I really like the way they're playing. Denzel Valentine is on another level. He is a great player that really distributes the ball, can score, and they are supremely confident. They're well coached. And you know, I guess Kansas is another team you got to look at that's playing at a high level at the end of the season, like Michigan State is. I think it's got to be one of those two teams in my book. Yeah, the Blue Bloods certainly are strong this right. year in the NCAA tournament. Some folks even toss around Purdue as a potential sleeper pick to get to the final. Well, that four. size they have, and you know they have some shooters, and if they can get on a roll in the tournament, Purdue can be hard to handle because they have legitimate two big men and most teams don't even have legitimate one big man to play in the post so uh, I, I think it's a that is a good sleeper pick if you're looking for somebody Michigan State's only lost one game that Valentine has played in this year right that was the game of Purdue so yeah. they are as good as it gets when, with him on the floor with him healthy uh, I went through the bracket this morning because uh -huh. I wanted to answer the question Michigan State and Kansas in the final with Michigan State winning I also have North Carolina because my dad's a Tar Heel in Oklahoma. I think they have a good chance as a two seed to get through. So. Buddy Held and company. I know nothing about college basketball. <laughs> well, Syracuse, Michigan State, possible second round matchup. Todd's not I worried about the Syracuse Orange. The no. Final four, no, no, Syracuse no. Syracuse shouldn't no, no. even be I've in the I've got Michigan tournament. winning it all. But Syracuse, Michigan Dayton. State. Yes, I know. Yes, Syracuse plays Dayton and then would play Michigan State. But <laughs> we don't even have to address that because it's not going to happen. That does it for this week's Press Row. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy all the state coverage we'll have on the West Ohio Sports Network and on radio this weekend. We'll see you.